Hi, how's it going? My name is Andre. This will be the first part in a series of hopefully many YouTube tutorials on music production and sound design. I'm also working on putting together some tutorials for ProducerDJ.com. I've been making music under the name Andrelian for the last bunch of years, and right now I'm working on a different project called Iterate that I should have some music coming out for pretty soon. And years ago, I used to make music under the name Hyoka. So I wanted to show you some stuff in Bitwig. I switched to using Bitwig earlier this year from Ableton. Um, I've been on Ableton for about 15 years, so I'm a lot less experienced with Bitwig. Um, and I wouldn't say either DAW is better than the other. They both have their advantages, and they're both pretty limitless, you know, and I'll probably continue using both of them. But I want to show some stuff in Bitwig because I've been pretty excited about a lot of its features. And since sw making the switch over to it, I've been kind of stumbling upon a bunch of different production techniques and sound design techniques that I might not have known about or thought about if I wasn't learning a new DAW. So um, this that you're looking at, this is inside of the grid. The grid is Bitwig's modular environment. So it's kind of like Reactor or Max or um, VCB Rack or using Eurorack stuff. And that it's modular and you can build things with it. So you can make sequencers, samplers, synths, effects, utilities, all sorts of stuff. And um, I really, really like the way they've implemented it over here. I feel like it's a lot easier to use, quicker and funner for sound designers and musicians um, than like trying to program something in something like Reactor. Not blocks, but like a primary or core. Um, and that's not to say anything bad about Reactor. I love using Reactor, and you know it's completely limitless in what you can do with it. But I think actually programming in Reactor is more kind of geared towards programmers, whereas I feel like this is more kind of geared towards, um, yeah, just like I was saying, musicians, sound designers who just want custom effects, custom instruments, and don't really want to go down a rabbit hole of trying to program something really big and complex. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give you a rundown of some of the patches I've been working on recently. And then if there's time on this video, I'll build one of them from scratch. But if the video ends up running long, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> I'm just gonna do that on a separate video. But I just wanted to show you a few of the different patches I've been doing so you can kind of get an idea of some of the stuff it does and some of the stuff I like about it and what I'm doing with it. So um, this first patch here is a kind of glitchy sampler. So uh, you can load one-shots or loops or multi-samples, whatever, in here and glitch them out and tweak them in all sorts of various ways. I was kind of trying to a little bit copy what machine, uh, what Electron does with um, parameter locks. So I wanted like a sampler that I could tweak all sorts of different parameters on a step sequencer. Uh, I'll play the patch I have loaded up in here right now. So um, that's just using a multi-sample with a whole bunch of old breakbeats loaded into it and then some things that kind of sound sort of like old breakbeats that I made in addictive drums. And um, and yeah, so let me give you a rundown of what all these sequencers do. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because like I said, I'll put it together in another video, but I, um, I want to show you what the features are over here. And uh, first thing to note, too, is that each one of these sequencers can run at half time or double time if you want. So... Um, if you're working at different tempos or if you want to have half time or double time beats in the tempo that you're at, that gives you the option. And then also all, all the sequencers run in either forward, reverse, pendulum, or uh, random. So that kind of allows you to have less predictable sequences and stuff. So um, this first sequencer up here, if you can see where my mouse is, the green one, this um, the bottom row is basically triggers and then as you go up, it adds more triggers. And if you go up really high, they're really fast. So you can do kind of fast, glitchy stutters that way. So like if I do this, you'll hear it gets, or if I go really high, you can hear it, it becomes like um, tones. So yeah, that sounds like that. And then, um, oh yeah, one thing about that too, you can change the speed of all those. I have a half and double knob too. So you can change the rate of the stutters. And then the next row is just the note sequencer so that's for either pitch or for slices if you're uh, if you've sliced it ahead of time into a multi-sampler and that can the pitches can be quantized too on that the next one's just um an unquantized pitch uh that, that's just modulating the transpose on the sampler and then the next one is the sample position the reason this is here is to rearrange the beats so basically this divides the loops up into either 16 or 32 parts so that you can, you know, rearrange and play different patterns out of the same loops. Um, yeah, so that's how I have this, that's how I have this patch that you were just hearing, because uh, I didn't slice any of those drums ahead of time, so they're just loops, so I can 
rearrange them all I want with this position knob or with this position sequencer. And then um, after that, I have some effects. I have a comb filter, distortion, uh, sample and hold that's affecting the, um, well, that's doing sample rate reduction. And then I have a delay. And then um, up here, these are all sampler parameters. And then down here, this is sample select. So, the, you know, this uses a 128. Any Ableton or Reactor users would be familiar with 128. It's basically um, 128 samples that can be triggered by a sample select knob or by a node or by velocity. So um, over here, yeah, the, each, uh, each of these bars will trigger a different sample. And then up here, these are all parameters for the sampler. And the sampler in Bitwig is really cool. It has three modes, repitch, which is like tape, cycles, uh, which is like wavetables and you can load in serum wavetables and stuff like that into it and it works just fine although they've just recently added a separate wavetable oscillator and then um the third mode is granular and it's very cool too um, when you first look at it it might look very basic compared to other granulators but you can actually pretty much do anything with it because it's um because bitwig's modulation is so flexible um so like you know, they don't have jitter like you'll see on reactor granulators as an option, but you can still um, do the same thing with their uh, random modulators. And um, with their voice stacking, you can make big, lush grain clouds and all sorts of stuff with it. So, um, yeah, so I have this sequencer. So so if it's down here, it's repitch mode. If it's in the middle, it's wavetable mode. If it's at the top, it's granular. And then the next sequencer is the sample speed, and that works for each one of those modes. And then the third one is the grain the grain size over here and then um yeah when i first was putting this patch together before i was actually putting loops in it i was using it for doing like uh glitchy percussions and stuff so i would have just um multi samples with a whole bunch of random little kind of fm blips and beeps and stuff like that actually here i'll let me i'll load in a uh, multi sample like that so you can kind of hear what i'm talking about let me uh find these i just have my um folders on a separate screen So you can just load any multi sample or any multi sample into the sampler over here. I kind of keep it off the main interface because you don't really need to see it. There's all sorts of stuff that you don't really need to see that's just off in space, so I don't clutter the main interface. And yeah, unfortunately, right now I don't think there's a way to hide the wires. Maybe there is, and I don't know about it, but um, I don't know how to hide the wires. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if you could, and if you could turn off the visibility for other things too. But anyway, yeah, so I just loaded in a bunch of one-shots into there. So if I turn off the position and then maybe turn this up to 16. Play with these a little bit. Then, yeah, this should just sound... It's completely random, so I don't know if it's going to sound like anything, but it should just be some kind of glitchy percussion. <laughs> It was actually different sample map as much of vocal hits but anyway you get the point uh yeah i'm gonna move on to another one so the next uh the next patch is an effect unit that does kind of a similar thing as the previous patch so i was just kind of trying to do sort of like what glitch effects do like um debu glitch or anything like that so i just have an aim and break loaded on here and you can hear what this will sound like so yeah um this like i said it's a similar effect um this lane is re triggers the next one there's a mod delay which is uh it's one of the delays in the grid there's a comb filter and the fre frequency amount and uh Again, a sample and hold for um, sample rate reduction, a filter, and another delay, which is a, a different delay that they have in the grid. And then the filter, you have a, it's a multi mode, so you can change it over here. And this is um, the re the re triggers are done using the recorder device. Um, Bitwig put out a video showing how to do um, how to make a repeater using the delay, but uh, I found I couldn't really get really really fast stutters doing it that way. Because like this way, you can see I can get very very fast stutters just like on the other one and then the one thing too you can see um so what these lanes are actually affecting is the repeats for the on the recorder for the playing 
up here is for the recording. So if I want to say um, only repeat this step, I can just turn off the triggers for the recorder and just repeat that this step out for a bit like this. Like that. Anyway, yeah, I'll move on to the next patch. So this one over here is an FM synth. And uh, I might say, you know, phase modulation or FM interchangeably. Uh, you know, usually when we say FM, we're talking about phase modulation because frequency modulation is pretty rare on digital synths. Um, I think I have a patch loaded in this. Let me um, play notes. You can hear what's going on on this thing. Um, so, yeah, this is a... Uh, like I said, it's an FM synth. It's using three, well, what I'm calling, I'm calling them VCOs, but basically each one of these VCO1 and VCO2 are um, combinations of all of these oscillators within Bitwig. And you can see that each one of these oscillators has the knob positions in the same way. And you can right click on any one of them and replace it with the other one. Um, but because all the knob positions are in the same way, you can just have one knob that sends to modulate all of them. So I basically wanted to be able to um, morph between all the different waveforms. Um, yeah, and then the routing that I was intending, you can do any routing, but the routing I was intending was that operator one goes to the main output, operator two is used to FM that one, and then there's the wavetable that can FM operator two, or it can also FM operator one. And then there's this whole phase warp section, which is actually what you were just hearing, because I, I don't even have the wavetable on. I'm just um, using this whole phase warp section right now to um, affect the FM, basically. So, uh, yeah, I can give you a, a quick rundown of what's going on. Let me, I think I might have had enough distortion on here. Let me just turn that off. Yeah. So you can hear it with. So that's, yeah, with no distortion on it. Um, so if I turn off all the FM and nothing else is on, you can see the different waveforms over here. So there's your sun. Oh, let me turn off this distortion too. So there's our sine. This is a uh, phase one oscillator. So this is from Bitwig's phase four synth, which is, uh, uses phase distortion synthesis. synthesis. So it's kind of like Yuhi Bazil, if anybody's used that. It's a very cool synth. Um, yeah, and then the third mode, If I actually if I press this, I, it won't morph so we can hear exactly which oscillators are coming through. So this one's a saw, square, triangle, and then this swarm oscillator that they have. So, um, like I said, I have basically uniform parameters for each one of them. So for each one of them, there's a shape knob and then this knob, which either does wave folding or sync. So you can hear like for the sine wave, this shape is a skew. And then this is the wave folding. And then if I go to the, um, to the phase oscillator, no, that's, that's the sawtooth, but it's a shape and sync and then if I go down to the phase you have um, uh, that's a different type of shape and then this is like a feedback and then there's these different algorithms and formant effects for the phase one oscillator so there's, there's a bunch that you can do with those um, yeah and then there's also so let me put, let me just put this back down in the sine wave. There's also, uh, let me turn this on too. Turn off the detuning so you can hear exactly what's going on. So there's also white noise that can be used to FM any one of them, and it can also go into the main output. So if I FM the operator one, it sounds like this with white noise. And then, yeah, VCO2 is the same thing. The wavetable is just using Bitwig's new wavetable oscillator. Before, I had a sampler in here that had a 128 of um, Serum wavetables. But now that the wavetable came out, I just took out the sampler. I'm using this instead. And then um, for for each one of these, you have basically a knob that decides what the FM source is. So for op, uh, operator 1 or VCO1, it can be FM'd either by VCO2 or by the wavetable or by the phase warp. And then... VCO2 can be FM'd either by the wavetable or the phase warp. And any one of these, they can be running not just by either or, but it can be running by both of them or one of them running into the other one. So like I can I can have VCO1 FM'd by VCO2 FM'd by the wavetable being fed by the phase warp. 
Um, so yeah, that that whole kind of signal path I was planning on for doing kind of random morphing bass sounds and stuff. Um, cause I like that kind of signal path and yeah, it's pretty cool. Like I said, I'm, I haven't really been using, I don't know if I did mention that, but I haven't really been using any other synths lately since I got the grid. This is all I'm using unless I need something like additive or physical modeling, then I'll use something else. But, um, for like FM wavetables, uh, subtractive synthesis, I'm just using the grid right now. And, um, yeah, for a while I was getting into faceplant and faceplant's definitely very cool. And I think if you're not using the grid, it's a very, uh, it's probably the best way to get these kind of, uh, patches of, uh, mixing wavetables and FM and stuff. Um, yeah. And then I, what else is there? There's also a sub oscillator over here before I just had a sine wave. They just added this whole sub oscillator section. So I have that. And then it has a frequency splitter. If you want to frequency split the sub from the rest of the bass. And then, um, there's a option to bypass all the effects for the sub, just like in serum. Uh, yeah. And that's pretty much it. And then, yeah, there's filters, comb filter and a multi-mode filter. And those can, you can blend between them and some distortion and then just some modulation sources over here. And these modulation sources are the same as in Bitwig's modulators. If anybody hasn't used Bitwig, Bitwig has a very extensive modulation section that you can use on anything. So you can, you know, like if I'm using a synth within Bitwig, I probably won't use any of the synth's internal LFOs or anything because it's easier to use them Bitwig's. And, and then I can also, you know, have Bitwig's modulator assigned to other things as well to kind of have constant movement in, in patches. So, um, yeah, that's that synth. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is just something I threw together for making kicks. Uh, generally more like the body of my kick. Um, usually I'll process them more after this, but this is just kind of the default patch I have set up. So um, I don't actually touch anything on here. I set it all with uh, macros down here so I can just basically control all the different parameters without getting into all of this. The only thing I ever touch on this section is over here. You can see that's where you uh, input the the pitch. And then I have a 128 of a bunch of different uh, kicks from like break beats or addictive drums or different kind of textural sounding kicks that are just used for, for textures for layering on top of the main body, but they don't really affect the like body or the pitch of the kick. And then I have a transient control over here. Um, I kind of decided to do it. I tried a few different ways and I kind of liked uh, having the transients as just a quick FM hit instead of layering them. But, you know, everybody's got different ways about doing these th kind of things. Um, but yeah, I'm also, aside from my kicks, I'm doing my snares. I'm doing really like a lot of stuff. I have a ton of patches I've been doing in, in, in the grid. So I just wanted to kind of give you a sort of look at to some of the stuff I'm doing with it and kind of how flexible it is. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Like I'm, I'm side chaining in it too. I'm doing, <laughs> doing a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I'm going to follow up this video with other videos going into more detail and actually taking apart these patches and building them from the ground up. But I think this video is already long enough. I don't want to let it carry on too long, but thanks for watching. Bye.